Good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on the 18th of April. It's really good to have you with us as we gather to pray for the world and for one another. And so as we're gathering, uh, let's just uh, get ourselves comfortable and perhaps have a piece of music playing quietly in the background or um, a candle lit. Uh, and let's just uh, remember that God's presence is with us with a short time of quiet at the beginning of our time together. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. He made heaven and earth. And we come now to pause a moment to reflect on the day that has been perhaps the highs, the lows, times when we've struggled, times when we've found real joy. And let's lay them before God, uh, as well as ask him for forgiveness or receive forgiveness for something that we need to f find forgiveness from. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. We come now to our psalm. I encourage you to say it aloud with me if you're able to, um, but you can just listen or follow along in your Bibles too. We're going to use Psalm 51. And you can find that um, on BibleGateway.com. If you just type BibleGateway.com in and put in Psalm 51, it will come up with the psalm for you. Or like I say, you can just listen or turn to it in your Bibles. So Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired fruit faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and a renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you. 
deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God my Saviour, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading for Saturday evenings is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12. And it says this, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This really struck me today and it reminded me of Saul's experience with Jesus when he met him on the road to Damascus and he was overcome by the light of Jesus and blind as a consequence until Ananias came to pray for him. Jesus' presence so illuminated the darkness of Saul's heart that he changed completely. He went from seeking out and murdering those who followed Jesus to being one of them and telling people about Jesus, becoming persecuted himself. The darkness of his heart was so illuminated that his purpose became to walk in the light of life itself, following Jesus and sharing what he had done in his life with others. This reminds us that Jesus really does make a difference in our lives. It really is darkness to light. And we're reminded of that in the baptism when we have a light that is lit, a candle that is given to us, and we are told to shine brightly. Although it is really an instant turnaround in one sense, as soon as we receive Jesus, we receive the light of life, there's also some slow change that happens as we seek to follow him and as he teaches us. We're learning to walk it out. We're learning to walk in that light where for a long time we may have walked in darkness. And if we're honest, this is difficult for us. When we think about what this means, we all have areas of our lives where we struggle to allow Jesus to bring light in order that we might find freedom. Sometimes it's unforgiveness that we really struggle to let go of. Sometimes it's habits of gossiping or backbiting about other people. We just get offended and it all comes out and we struggle to break that habit. Sometimes it's exaggerating the truth or outright lying that we just have a habit of doing. Perhaps sometimes when we feel anxious or defensive, or we want to please other people, or fit in. And sometimes it's not habits per se that come to mind, but a particular one-off instance that really haunts us and we feel ashamed of. The truth of who Jesus is as the light of life, the light of the world, and what he did for us on the cross is life-changing. 
but we also need to walk it out. We also need to learn to allow Jesus to shine his light on those parts of our lives that we would rather him not see or that perhaps we'd even rather not deal with because of fear of what it might uncover. The truth is we don't need to be ashamed. Jesus didn't come to shame us. The Holy Spirit may convict us in our hearts, might shine a light on it to show us that it's there, but only so we can have freedom and restoration, not to shame us, not to make us feel nothing, but to restore us to who we are created to be in Christ. And the, the, the sad thing is that we forget that because of the cross, these things don't actually have power over us anymore. It's just they feel like they do sometimes, or perhaps sometimes we even give them that power. Jesus shines his light so that we might know truth, not lies. Sometimes the devil will whisper lies in our ear and tell us that we don't deserve to come to Jesus, so we should just stay away. Perhaps would shame us and say, well, if you came, he would reject you. Jesus shines the truth of who he really is. And says, actually, because of me, you can come. You can come forward because of what I've done on the cross. I have made a way. And actually, Jesus desires that we find forgiveness. Jesus desires that we find freedom. Jesus desires that we reflect his likeness the way we were created to. And actually, there is no darkness too great for him to illuminate. Perhaps there is something on your heart now that comes to mind when we talk about these things. It could be something of a habit that's in your mind. It could be something that was a one-off but feels like it really cuts deep still when you think about it could even be you just desire to know this truth more deeply in your heart. Perhaps that you desire to share more with others what Jesus has done for us, for you. Well, let's spend some time recognising that Jesus, the light of the world, is present with us now and allow him to lighten any darkness in our minds or hearts perhaps reach out for him, say we're sorry, for, ask for forgiveness for anything we feel we need to, receive it, or perhaps ask for help in forgiving someone. Let's just allow God to show us in our hearts and minds, bring light, and just speak with him about what comes.
Lord Jesus, light of life, would you bring freedom to our minds, hearts, souls and bodies. Illuminate the darkness Help us to receive and share your forgiveness and transform our hearts, transform our habits that as we know your saving love, the lightness in the dark, that we would be changed for the sake of your kingdom and your glory. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Now at this time, we continue to pray for the world, for one another. And please do feel free to comment with your own prayers or prayer requests so that we can pray for one another and it's also absolutely fine if you would like to pray just in your heart where you are quietly. But please do check the comments just to see if there's anything that you can be praying for. Hopefully we are all upholding each other in prayer today. However we choose to pray, let's trust in God's presence. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, in body, mind or spirit, especially anyone who is grieving loss at this time. We trust that whenever danger threatens, your loving arms are always there to hold us safe. And in this time, you may like to name before God, you know, uh, those people that you know who are struggling in this way. Let's just spend some time lifting those on our hearts to God. For all those we have named before you, Lord Jesus, we trust you for their comfort and healing and we ask that you would restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we lift to you those who work in the NHS, caring professions and those who are key workers. And we particularly pray for those who are working with pregnant or labouring women or supporting parents expecting a new addition to their family, perhaps through fostering or adoption. 
with this pandemic, it's a really difficult time for those who are in this stage of life and for those who are seeking to care for them. The added worry of this pandemic and difficulties that come with social distancing, it can become even more tricky to do this job. And Lord God, we especially thank you for those that work in those roles, for the work that they are doing. And we pray that they would know gratitude, care and protection at this time. And we do pray for those expecting a new addition to their family or having recently gained one that they would know your peace at this time. They would know your comfort. And Lord God, that they would know your presence ever near them. Perhaps there are some key workers whom you would like to name before God at this time. Let's just do that in these moments now. Lord Jesus, may they know your strength, your presence and provision, particularly at this time. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we pray for our world at this time. And we especially pray for countries where poverty is widely experienced by the population. As they seek to deal with the pandemic, we pray for wisdom for their governments and local leadership at this time. We pray for care for one another and compassion. And Lord, we pray for change to come in how we treat one another and in how we look at what we have and what we don't. And Lord, may there be a rethink in the systems that we have in place that seem to put people into poverty and keep them there whilst widening the rich and the poor gap. We pray for our government at this time. We pray for wisdom for them as well, as they seek to organise what is needed for this pandemic. But we also pray 
that other issues are not forgotten, that are important. And we particularly think of those whom are already hit by austerity, who are already feeling the pinch of council and NHS cuts, many who are vulnerable, many who feel forgotten. And we pray for compassion in our leadership locally and at government level. And in this time, I invite you to lift countries and situations towards the Lord. Let's do that now together. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, we bring ourselves our neighbours, our friends, our families, those we live with, our very homes, before the Lord. And again, let's just spend some time offering our own prayers to God. visit this place, our homes, O oh Lord, we pray, 
and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace and may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we finish our time of prayer together, I'll be posting the link for our worship song that we'll be finishing with. Um, so please do feel free to continue to post prayers or to post uh, praises uh, for what God has done and who he is. Uh, the song is Hallelujah for the Cross, Chris McClarney. So please do search that um, on YouTube if you're on YouTube, um, but I will post the link on the Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining us as we at St Thomas's Church continue to pray in this time. Uh, we would love you to join us again. Uh, we're going to be continuing each evening at 7pm during this uh, pandemic lockdown. Um, as we close our prayer time together, please do look after yourselves and each other. And uh, we go and finish in God's blessing. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. God bless you and good night.